Well, I'm excited to share with you an idea that I think is worth spreading. Now, the question is always asked, is it true? Is it true? Well, is it true? Is it true? Yes. The answer is yes. We've been married for going on 40 years and haven't had an argument in over 35 years. Now, people always say, you've never had an argument? I didn't say that. I said we haven't had an argument in 35 years. Those first few years were like World War III. Horrible. But, but we learned some lessons. Now, that the principles that we actually put into practice. And they worked, and we've shared them with couples all over the country, and now we want to share them with you. An idea, a simple idea that works. So we're excited about being able to share this. Now, here's what excited about it is, we know that the statistics show that 50% of marriages break up. In the United States. And typically, most break up at the seven-year point. So we had a statistic we've beaten the seven-year, and we've beaten the regular more, by more than 30, 40, almost 40 years. Now, the key is that 50% break up, but of the 50% that remain... 50% that are left are miserable. They're together, miserable. but they're not happy. Now, miserable. Are they together because they can't afford to live apart? Are they together because they think that it's going to help in terms of raising the kids? They really don't know, but they're miserable. Miserable. And so we got 50% breakup, and of the 50% that remain, 40% are miserable, and we want to help them. Now, we had no idea, no intention to be talking about marriage. That was not our goal. But our son. Our son said, I'm talking to my friends, and they're complaining about the parents. They always have problems. And I'm like, I've never heard my parents argue. And they're like, you know that's a lie. That's just a flat out lie. And so on a recent anniversary, our son said, could I have a few friends over? We want to talk to you about how you guys get along. You work together, you travel together, and I've never seen you argue, and now you got to tell them how you do it. So we went out to dinner for our anniversary. We came back home. We said, oh, just a few friends. We got back home. We were about 100 kids in the house. Houseful. Houseful pizza boxes and soft drinks, and we gave them our 10 Lessons, 10 secrets, or 10 tips. Our 10 ideas that we had of how we do it. And, the, and it went great. Well, after that, he called the next day and said, my phone is blowing up, my social media, all my friends say, we want more, we need a book. We said, a book? We don't have time for a book, but he kept working on us, kept pushing us. So before the book was really, here's the list, and we sent it out via email. That's right. And then he kept pushing us and pushing us. Finally, we wrote a book. It's called Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. And it's been amazing how many marriages have been saved because we shared the ideas. And so we found that there were four Fs. There's a four F formula that helps people to stay married, and particularly in communication. See, there are three things that break up marriages, sex, Money, communication, and the communication. common thread through everything. Communication is the number one thing that breaks up. If you, if you have good communication, you have a better love life. Have good communication, have better money life. So communication is a common element, a common denominator for marriages staying together or breaking up. So we found these four F's that help you in the process of communicating better. And it came about by not a... Easy situation. It was Chinese food. But it really wasn't the Chinese food. It's what the Chinese food represented for us. We had an argument and a chi over Chinese food that almost broke up our marriage. It was a Chinese food carryout counter. So here's what happened. Her brother and his wife were coming to Washington to visit. First time coming. And I called him on the phone and said, well, we're going to have dinner for you. What do you like? He said, well, whatever you like. I said, I like Chinese. I love Chinese. He said, Chinese is fine. Uh, so I said, we're going to go get some Chinese food. Now, I took my wife with me. I'm a Chinese food aficionado. I'm a cheating vegan. Okay. She don't know nothing about Chinese food. But anyway, we went to my favorite Chinese food restaurant where they give you big portions. And I said, here's what we need. Boom, 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 boom. And she said, 
that is not enough. You are going to embarrass me in front of my brother. The first time he's coming to be seen, you cannot embarrass me. We must have more. I said, but that's all we need. That's more than enough. And we'll waste money. We'll waste, waste money. Let me tell you something. He's cheap. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking he doesn't want to order these things because he's cheap. True. <laughs> I will make a dollar holler, okay? <laughs> so I said, no. So then I said, no, this is all we need. And it escalated. And you know what? He most, got loud. Yeah. He most, talked loud. He got louder. Most breakups in marriage start with a little problem that's not handled, and it just keeps getting bigger. It accelerates. It expands. And for a little, before you know it, go from a little crack to a chasm. That's what happens. So people argue, and it just accelerates because they want to win. So I got mad. I started hollering. I stopped it. I said, I will leave you. She put her face. And I didn't know where I was going to go, but I was going to leave you. She put her finger in my face. I'll leave you. So I said, oh, I better work on this. So I decided to dial it back. Everybody say, dial it back. See, that means you stop being angry, you turn down the volume, and you refocus. So I said, okay, I'll get whatever you want. That's a good husband. And I got, <laughs> I got everything she wanted. We went home, we had a great dinner, and... You were right. It was too much. We have food to throw away. And he talked about it a lot. All right. <laughs> So we, we, we wasted all this food, but anyway, when it over, the brother and his, my brother-in-law and his wife, they left, and then I said to my wife, we need to talk about it. And I really didn't want to talk about it, because I really just wanted to go to bed. I said, we need to talk about it before we go to bed. And we talked about it, and she said, my daddy never hollered at me or raised his voice. My daddy was a fire and brimstone minister. He was always sweet and kind. My brother never raised his voice to me. I can't handle that. It causes my temperature to rise. That does not work for D. So she said, I don't like people hollering at me. I said, fine, check. And I said, I don't like people threatening me. And we made a deal. We got some rules of engagement. Those were our rules of engagement that I'd never holler. She said she would never threaten to leave. And we kept our promise. Well, out of that came a 4F formula, a system for disagreeing without arguing, without getting angry. And we really didn't realize that we were coming up with the system when we did it. But we said that we need to have a way that when we don't agree, agree and not on the same page, how do we talk through it and still be loving and kind? That is the 4F system, because if you get this 4F system, it works every time. Here's the first F. Be friendly. Now, how can you be friendly when you're upset, you're annoyed? You're angry. You're angry. You do what we call a pattern interrupt. A pattern interrupt is that you turn down the volume. This is what I did that day. Breathe. Here's a pattern interrupt. Count to 10. Go for a walk. Take a ride. But you don't speak while you're angry. So you have to figure out what that pattern interrupt needs to be for you. For me, I can take a deep breath and I go to yoga class. But whatever it is, you don't say anything while you're angry for two reasons. One, that words are like toothpaste. Once they're out of the tube, you can't take can't them back. Put it back in. Okay? Second, when you're angry, you're belligerent, people put up defense mechanisms and they don't listen. So you start out by taking your time, doing a pattern interrupt so that you are calm, be friendly. Then be frank about your feelings. Be frank about your feelings, which means tell the truth about your feelings. This is what you said in terms of how it made me feel. You said this, but my feeling was this. It hurt my feelings. It made me feel bad. It embarrassed me. So not you, you did this, you did that. It's this is how that made me feel. Be frank about your feelings. Next one is be fair. Be fair. Now, what does that mean? Listen. You have to stop. You have to listen. Mm -hmm. Listen, question, clarify. So you're listening not so that you can just say what you were going to say in the beginning, but you're listening to get a clear understanding of what this person is actually thinking, what the words actually mean. So you're going to listen. You're going to question. Are you saying that this? Oh, you're really saying this. Let me summarize what you said. Is that what you mean? Oh, you meant, oh, I didn't realize you meant 
Oh, I get it now. So listen, question, clarify. Listen actively without cutting in. Or aggressively. Be focused. Number four is be focused on a win-win. We both want to win. I love him. So I don't want to destroy him. I want to work with him all the time. So this came uh, up recently because I had a situation. I left my wallet in my car. Oh, I do it because I, I'm afraid somebody's going to steal it in the gym. Because one time I left my, lock, my wallet in the locker without a lock on it, and somebody took it. And so for, since then, I put my wallet in the car. My wife for years has been saying, don't leave your wallet in the car. Please don't leave your wallet. You. Take it with you, please. But one day, I left my wallet in the car, came out to the gym. I was on the phone. The phone was called. And it was important. And I'm talking to the guy. I get in the car, and I start driving home. I put the phone on the system in the car. I'm driving home. I'm talking. I get home. I get out the car. And then I take all my belongings. I think I take them all. And I go in the house. I'm still on the phone. And then when I finish the call, I hang up and I go about my day. Later that evening, it's time to go out. I can't find my wallet. I look all over the house. I can't find it. I look in the car. It's not there. Oh, no. I got to go to my wife. I said, I think someone took my wallet out the car. What do you think she said? I told you so. No, she didn't say that. What did you say? Let's get busy. Let's freeze the credit cards. Let's call the individual credit card company. You take half, I take half. Passwords, all of that. It took us about two hours, but we got it done. And folks, it's the pressing lesson is, I would have done the same thing if it happened to her. The lesson is, we did not attack each other. We attacked we the attacked problem. We attacked the problem. We gang up on the problem rather than each other. And so that's the secret. We're in it to win it. And it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And so the lessons are be friendly. Be frank about your feelings. Be fair. Listen. And be focused on a win-win. If you do, you'll be happily married for a long time and you won't argue. This is Willie Jolly. This is D. Taylor Jolly. Jolly out. <laughs>